This is photo manipulation at the pro level. In this video, agency owner Clifton Loftels will give you the lowdown on how we created this insane Call of Duty gamer scene with studio photography and Photoshop compositing. Be sure to stick with us to the end guys as this one is jam packed with tips including cinematic techniques such as motion blur and depth of field. If you're interested in making a full time living with your photo manipulation artwork, this is definitely the video to watch. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to the video. My name is Dean. I'm a pro digital artist from the UK and you're tuned into photomanipulation.com. On this channel, we will take you beyond the Photoshop basics and into the world of advanced Photoshop techniques. So today we've got agency owner Clinton Lofthouse here and he's going to be showing us how and why he put together this crazy World War II Call of Duty inspired gamer piece. How are you doing today, Clinton? Yeah, I'm good. You? Yeah, not too bad. Ticking along. So <laughs> what I want to know is, for the guys at home, who you are, what you do, and a little bit about the agency that you run, please. Yeah, I'm Clinton Loftus. I'm a photographer and photo manipulator from the UK. I run an agency called Rebel North Creative. We specialize in brand content, brand strategy, creative content, and we create marketing and advertising images for brands and businesses. Cool, cool. And this particular piece, can you tell me why you put this together and what was the, the purpose of it? So what we do when you work in the advertising market, marketing industry, what you have to do sometimes is you need uh, client acquisition. So sometimes what you do is you create pictures and you, you take that pitch and you take it to a potential client and you say, this is what we can do. Is there any way you think we could work together? And then uh, it's a bit more elaborate than that, but that, that's kind of the generic overview of it. So what we are doing at the minute is we're niching down into kind of gaming e-commerce, gaming peripherals, gaming brands. We are quite generalist at the minute, but with any business, you always want to niche. The more you niche, the more of a specialist you become. And then obviously the more money you can bring in. So this piece came about because we were, we were creating a pitch for a specific company. And what we like to do is create usually a series of images to set just not just one image. You want to create a few different pieces. You maybe want to create some hero images, maybe some little bits of video and then some other moving images. But for this one, we had the idea of a, a guy playing his computer and uh, he sat at his desk, but then everything around him has changed into the game he's playing. So we did three different images. Uh, the World War II one was kind of the main one and the one what I like the best. We did a, yep. a uh, Resident Evil style one and then we did a cyberpunk. So Prior to doing this shoot, how how did you set everything up? How how did you organise this? Because it's quite a, a complex concept that you had to put in place with models and lighting and costumes and props. And yeah, things. well, always. How, how did you pull with, it all together? It always starts with the concept. So what we did is we brainstormed a few ideas. We came up with the idea. It'd be quite fun to have the gamer in the world of the game that he's playing. So I mean, and once we had that concept everything else sounds quite easy so what we did is we just created a few mood boards of the different games and then we found out yeah horror which is kind of survivalist horror the war game and science fiction is kind of the main staples usually of video games yeah so there was so we we then created mood boards around that uh once we knew the the overall concept of the, each image then it was like right how many models do we need what costumes do we need uh, where are we going to shoot it and it's basically just production from that point. So obviously to save money, because this is a pitch, we use Nick. And if you look in the war image, it's actually Nick who plays every single one of those army guys. So okay. there, is ways of, there is ways of keeping the costs down on certain things. Yeah. You don't wanna... hey, for the guys watching, can you just explain what a pitch is, please? It's basically you create a, a sample of what you can do and for prospective clients. But if you want work, you can't just wait for the work to come to you. You have okay. to uh, be proactive and go find clients. So part of the client acquisition is getting in touch with these clients. And showing them what you can do. Building a bit of a relationship and then saying, look, this is the kind of stuff we can do. Look what we could do for you. You would then create some bespoke, a bespoke pitch for them, show them, and then use the negotiations. So what you were saying about pitching to the agencies is kind of similar to what you do as a freelance, but a lot more involved. How, how is it different? From what you do as a freelancer because you like me was a freelancer mm. before how is running yeah. this agency different to being a freelancer 
Uh, it's just on a larger scale. So the things I had to, the things I picked up and learned as a freelancer, and now taking along with me to the agency and adapting them for the agency style of marketing, it's pretty much the same thing, but on a, a on a much larger scale. Larger scale. Um, but the, I mean, obviously there is. The, and I'm assuming the fees are a lot larger as well. Yeah, definitely. And if you yeah. are a sole trader or a freelancer, uh, kind of lone wolf operator. Yeah, that, well, that's kind of why I decided. Well, I kind of always knew I wanted to build an agency. Uh, and uh, working freelance, I used to work too many hours, and I thought I'm not. I'm not going to be able to work like this forever. So no, how do I do? Not how, sustainable. Yeah, yeah. So how do I do less work but get more money? And for me, uh, moving into the agency model is where I believe that kind of lifestyle comes from. Where did you shoot this? I shot this at York Studio in York, which is where I live. <laughs> the, That's cool. The... So what we got on screen here, Clinton, these are the kind of raw files from the shoot day, yeah? Yeah. So I'm a non-photographer. You're going to have to break this down for me a bit. Can you tell me um, if, if you could full screen one of these and tell us a little bit about the lighting and, and why you made these lighting choices? Yeah, so for composite, uh, I always say it's better to know your background before you shoot your model. And the reason for that is, is once you've got your backgrounds, you can then plan how to shoot your model around that. So if, say if you shot a, you had the background of a factory and you had a, a tungsten light on the left hand side up in the ceiling, but then you had an open window on the right hand side, which is natural light, you would need a light what has like a blue tone on the right hand side and you would need a, a light what's gelled with maybe a yellow gel on the left hand side to shoot your model with and then that would match the two light sources coming in on your background. Yep. Can you explain what a gel is please? So gel is so if you look at this flash here, this actually yep. this modifier, this has a, a like a yellow gel on it. So if you look at the edges here, you can kind of see the yellow coming off and it's it's spreading the yellow across onto this side of Nick. So it changes it's, the nature of the light, the the yeah the, the tone. Okay, so you've got the gel light in there. What type of background is that that you're using? So this is a 50% a grey background. So I tend to prefer to use those for composites just because uh, you get less. If you use a white background, you always get like this light halo around your figure. Fringing. Sometimes, Yeah, and sometimes if you, if you use a, a black one, uh, it's hard to get uh, the kind of outline of your figure. So for me, yep. grey always works best. Plus grey, there's a lot of Photoshop Photoshop hacks where you can blend textures in as well. Um, but yeah, I tend to prefer grey just because it plays nicer with all the different colours. That's quite a good idea. Um, I like that. Obviously, I've shot this uh, like this on purpose because in the image, I knew there was going to be ex an explosion on the left yep. and then the natural light would be coming from the right. So I've got a natural light uh, here, which you can see is blue toned. And then I've got this gel. You're getting kind of the, the glow of the explosion on the left hand side. And then it's basically just getting playing around your model, just getting them to do different poses, try different things. Uh, what I like to do is I'm not into static posing, so this is a static pose. So I said to Nick, but that, that just doesn't look to me like you're doing anything. It looks like you're a mime who's you're just, holding a pose. Yeah. So then yeah. I just said that just run across the room, and that's what he started doing, and you get more realistic uh, action action poses then. And then we did a few different holding the guns so don't just take a couple of pictures and think that's it we spent about an hour and a half maybe in here just getting different poses uh how long did the shoot day go on for um it was actually quite quick this one i would say three hours maybe oh that's fast yeah oh that no, you knew what he's doing going into that one yeah I've, I've done it that many times now i can this kind of this style of lighting i can quickly just go in set it up and usually when i press the uh the shutter button it's it's exposed correctly <laughs> that's cool they're good good explanations man this is good stuff the soldiers themselves weren't the only elements that were used for the composite there were other things going on uh, you sent me this png file it, this is one of your colleagues i believe yeah this is my business partner so obviously again because it's a pitch you don't want to be paying loads of money on models and things like that yep. so usually you'll just get one of your friends to jump in or you'll jump in yourself in this situation we've got uh, my business partner Corey to jump in <laughs> okay um, and i've, I've got a, a really nice folder here of loads of kind of png assets for this soldier um did you cut all of these out uh no i didn't actually um, oh okay T tell me what went down here 
I know you love the pen tool, but uh, for me, I've just I've got really tired of of just cutting things out. To be fair, I've done it a million times now. So what I do is I just get a pair for other people to do the cutting out of the, any elements that I need in Photoshop. So yeah, we've do... actually started doing that for the um, photo manipulation website, which yeah. will be launching very soon. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just saved me so mm -hmm. much time. Yeah, time is money, and you don't. Want I to will not let them do it for <laughs> personal artwork. I I still mm. enjoy the creative masochism of cutting stuff out with a pen tool yeah. so you've got the gamer element you've got the different png files that you can pick and choose from yeah um and right so i've got a selection of other stock images here and these are all from adobe stock yeah yeah uh pretty much i think that most of them are there might be a couple what are from somewhere else but um so there's the, literally quite yeah. a few different elements here. And were all of these elements used in the final composite? Yeah, everything that's in this folder was used uh, in some wow. way. It might, might have only been a little bit, but... Um, so, for example, that on this imagery, it was those metal... I don't know what these metal things are called, but you see them in war um, all the yeah, time. Yeah, they're anti-tank. Um, they, they use them for stopping tanks coming through, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Because so I've, I've, I've used them in art. The only reason I know is because I've used them in art myself. <laughs> Um, you've so, got a screenshot here from a video game, Call of Duty World War II. Was this for reference or was it for the monitor screen? Uh, that was for the monitor screen. So I obviously wanted them to be playing the game, what it's kind of inspired by. So Call of Duty yep, was that makes it. sense. So Clinton, we've got the PSB file here showing the full composite. I'm a massive fan of this. As soon as I saw it, I really wanted it to go on the channel, even though you didn't time lapse it. But we can <laughs> talk about it here today. Um, yeah. Uh, to tell me how you did this. Yeah, so basically once I got all the elements, uh, all the stock elements together, I got someone to cut them out, obviously. And then I started sourcing Adobe Stock and anywhere else for various stock images that I could use. And then once uh, I got, it, got them all together, I then just started to play around. I always have a vision in my head of how I want it to start and for it, a way for it to go. But then I have quite an organic editing style, so I've things can change as I go along. I might I might stop editing for a day and let it ruminate in my head and sometimes yeah. I, get be I get better ideas to put in or different things to do. I'm not sure how long this took. It, it could have been about six or seven hours, but I, could, I probably broke it up over uh, a few days. So we've got the layer stack here with all of the layers hidden. And what you're going to do now, Clinton, is you're going to go through step by step for the build up of this composite, yeah? Yep. So I'm just going to go through each layer and just yeah, that's cool. see what it is. So, first of all, we've got the background sky. Usually within, within an image, I tend to try and find the horizon line, and they do that by getting my sky in, uh, okay. seeing where the horizon is on with the sky, and then I can match it up with the land elements what I start cool. putting in. So, obviously, I started a this is going to be the background, so usually for the background sky, you want it to be a little bit less contrasty as well. Yeah, so um, but... you've used adjustment layers for that. You've got a hue set on one, and a, you're a fan of curves. You've got curves on the other one, yeah? yeah? Oh, yeah. There's a, probably a million curves in, in here. That's so cool. then I, start, I started building the beach up, so I found this image yep. of a beach here. This, to me, looks quite Call of Duty slash uh, Saving well, Private it's Normandy, Ryan. isn't it? Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm not actually sure if it is Normandy, but... Um, but I mean, looks... that's the vibe I'm getting. Yeah, as, yeah. As it's... So, so uh, Saving Private Ryan vibes, that kind yeah. of beach. Yeah. So then I just started building up this sand area. And a lot of this, I, I usually start quite rough and I just get all the elements together. And then yeah. later on, I'll start refining everything. Yeah, um, I'll do that. Cool. So I'm just bringing in the, the, the different... A bit piece matching those there. tones using those adjustment layers yeah. and you've gone for a clipping mask yeah. to so, limit that pixel data to the pixel data below yeah definitely i always use uh, oh, curves and clipping masks is basically my own thing. yeah <laughs> that's basically basically all i use so what i'm doing now is i'm bringing building up the foreground again color matching tone matching yep. uh, as you can see now i've desaturated a little bit as well now I'm adding a little bit more of a contrast. Can you explain to the guys watching why that foreground is a bit darker than the, the mid area? It, it's all to do with perspective. So as to create perspective in an image, usually the foreground's darker than it gets uh, less contrasty and lighter as you go yep. back. And it just gives you that sense of depth. It's actually the technical term for it is aerial perspective. Oh, I did not um, know that. 
yeah. <laughs> aerial perspective. I can actually use that when I'm yeah. talking right now. And also because the light is kind of coming from behind and up here, you would um, it would be darker in the foreground here. Yeah. So when I bring when we bring the models in, you'll see as well. So this is the shadows for all the tables and the models appearing now. Usually uh, that's done. Yeah, yeah. That's usually done afterwards after you get your models in, and then as you can see, I've got the. Ex explosions and then i'll start and the... that, that explosion asset from adobe stock uh, this one actually i think is not oh I think okay it's, I think it's this a moldy from... oldie i recognize that one that's yeah, way not... back in the day that is it's, it's from deviant art so that's yeah it is it is it's very low resolution isn't it yeah yeah that's yeah but for, cool. for background <laughs> is i've personally used that explosion loads of times <laughs> yeah i know i use a lot of the same assets because there's some really good ones what you can use in so many different images yeah so okay, again, so we've got some figures here. Um, yeah, why, now, why did you fade that man out in the background? Uh, to match the contrast of the uh, part of the location is in. Obviously, yep. as we go further back, you lose uh, contrast. Again, that's aerial perspective. And then I'm just bringing the models in now. And I will, I would have played around with them, seeing where that where works and where it doesn't work. Yeah. Uh, but these are the final um, images. So then we've got the explosion coming in. I recognise that one. Yeah. And then we've got the water splash as well. You know what, explosion. if you would have done this when we released our Epic Overlays bundle, you would have had all the assets you needed right there. <laughs> and then we're getting a, some a, a sand explosions, I guess. Okay. From the yeah, they're, they're handy. I've used them loads of times. So they're, they're good yeah. ones. And then I've just colour matched that as well to match the, the light. Using sand the Curves here. Clipping Mask. Yeah. And then again, just bring the guy in. Then. And um, just to clarify, every one of these soldiers is literally the same guy. Yeah, they're all Nick Hardy. <laughs> was it was it a creative decision to keep his face in, or was it? Did you think because the scene was so big that people wouldn't recognise it's the well, same I man? Think when you see an army, do you do you recognise the face? It's not much because yeah, you've got I, I, I didn't notice and that mm. it was the same guy until you told yeah. me it was the same guy. But I, I didn't mean, know if, it, if there was a deeper meaning or purpose yeah. behind that. No, if there, if there was a uh, if it was a job and we had a budget and we could just hire loads of models, then I would have hired different people yeah. for every role. But it's a, it's a pitch image, so you just kind of uh, use the resources. That yeah, you've it's got. to demonstrate what you're capable of and the kind yeah. of uh, illustration work you provide for your clients. Yeah. So let's bounce through this. What else have we got? So I'll just quickly start going up. So we've got all the just the different people. The coming figures here. used in the same, and that that's uh, very consistent. It's the curves mm. and ha hue set. Uh, adjustment layers to yeah. control yeah. the saturation mm. and so the, the kind of all tone. I did was to pull the saturation down a little bit yeah. and then and then color match and that's basically on every single person you'll see the same thing the saturation then yeah I saw uh, that repeated multiple much. times yeah. makes sense so we've got some more explosions and we've got yep. the anti-tank thingamajigs what you yep that's what I really. call them the thingamajigs and then we've got more people coming in cool, again sets. So we've got your yeah, main guy coming in here again desaturation and then uh tonal matching obviously because he's in the foreground he's going to be darker than these guys that are behind him yep then we've got uh the main star. focal point of the image really yeah, can you got... tell the guys at home a little bit about focal points in photo manipulation work yeah well it, it's in in art in general you need you need there needs to be a focus point in your image so uh, and it's up to you to decide what it is but then all the elements what surround that focal point need to complement that focal point so uh, the focal point of this image is is actually the center of the story the narrative story which is this guy is playing his computer he's like he's, fully immersed isn't he yeah he's like yeah inside. fully immersed and he's surrounded by the game around him yeah so we start bringing it in again Hue saturation and different colors. Uh, was the lighting setup much different for the gamer guy in, in the scene? Um, yes, obviously we shot him with a, a different gel. So as you can okay. see, the gel on Nick was actually quite yellow, but the gel on him, because it was a different studio, was more red. So what I had to do was shoot. But use... the thing is, the explosion over here, I'm assuming, would emit that kind of light anyway, because he's wearing a white, mm. um, his white shirt is more reflective than their matte kind of woolen um old-fashioned army outfit yeah it's a different color tone so that would gonna... naturally absorb more color information wouldn't it yeah but it, it's just a different hue because what you that, could I... do is just blag it and say yeah we meant mm. to do that yeah no but i changed i changed the color of the explosion to match it all these oh, guys wicked. Yeah. yeah 
Yeah. So I wanted to, I wanted the explosion to be more of an orangey, yellowy color. So then we've got the Google screenshot or the Call of Duty screenshot on his um, on his screen. The game is playing. As you can see, the storm in the beaches of Normandy here. Yep. So that matches up as well. And then we've got the other guys coming in again, same. And, and this concept, uh, was it you that came up with this or was it one of your colleagues? We, we are the brainstorm. It, it could have been oh, the wicked. Mixture. Yeah, it's yeah. mad what can come out uh, when you have a brainstorm, definitely. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I love I love working as a team because it's three brains are always better than one. Yeah. Well, it's like this photo manipulation project prior to this. Mm. I've never worked collaboratively with other people in, in such a way as this. The stock photography was collaborative, but this is a lot more intense and you get to think and plan and come yeah. up with really unique ideas. Yeah, no, it is. it's always better to work as a team, I think. So we got debris, um, more figures. Now I'm bringing, bringing in a foreground element. So what I've done is I've brought another anti-tank thingamajig to the foreground. Yep. And, I've, and to create depth, I always like to put something in the foreground and then blur it. And you kind of get that feeling. You're that's that's a classic Clinton technique. Um, <laughs> I've actually stolen that one many times. What's yeah. your preferred method for blurring that? Uh, I go. I kind of go between Gaussian blur and lens blur. Um, yeah. It depends what it is I'm actually blurring. I think for this one, I used the Gaussian blur. Yeah. Uh, and then I darkened it as well because it's in the foreground because it's and it's the closest to you. It's going to be one of the darker elements. And then we've got a little bit. What's of, that? Uh, that looked very subtle. What What was that layer that you just? So that's just what I've done there is I've just added a little bit of natural light bleed. So if you can, if you look around the. Sh that's the another soldiers. Clinton trick I've been stealing yeah. for years. That light bleed. Yep, I'll see that. Yeah, that, yeah, that's quite effective. Very subtle. Is that on a what percent opacity is that on? That is on a. It's on. Oh, you've used the fill to I've control used the fill, it. Yeah, I yeah, probably did it on cool. a low opacity brush and then just pulled the pulled the fill down a little bit. Yeah, uh, the, you guys were the ones that got me onto using the fill controls yeah. um, for both brushes and well, I haven't used it on layers yet. So yeah. that's that's something that I've learned today. So what I've done yep. then is you, you, yep. these little these little bullet bullet sand spatters have uh, appeared as well. So I just kind of you get in the action that there's loads of bullets raining down on them, and then I've played just playing around with again adding the gunfire in now, adding all these little elements and a little bit of glow around the gunfire. Guys, what I've done is I've made a list of all of the stock elements that Clinton's used on this piece, and I'm actually going to put them in the description below. So if you'd like these. Go into the description if you want to see exactly what is used or you want to grab them for yourself. I've included the links for all of those Adobe stock images down below. Yeah, carry on, mate. Sorry. Cool. And then we get to the trusty dodge and burn. We. So I didn't go overboard on this one, but I uh, yeah, dodged and burnt the people a little bit. Uh, mostly the highlights. and. Can you and... open up that folder and let's take a look inside? So it's just uh, dodge and burn. And a, both of them are on, do you still use in luminosity? Yeah, luminosity, just kind of non-destructive dodge and burn in with yep. curves. And you usually have a brush setting of around 13% or something along those yeah, lines? Yeah, I would say 14% for, for highlights, about 9 or 10% for, ah. for, for burning. Okay, that's interesting. So you use a lower opacity for the burning process. Yeah, because the burning seems to be a lot more aggressive for some reason. Okay, when you do it well, that's another tip way. I've picked mm. up today. Thanks for that, mate. And then <laughs> rounded it up, getting near the top, what other elements do you yeah, have here? Yeah, now I'm bringing in the planes. So Is obviously... there a motion blur on that plane? Can you zoom in on that plane for us, please? Yeah, you can, you can see this one here. Okay, so explain why this plane is motion blurred. Um, because it, it's moving. Again, when you're creating a scene where there's loads of things going on, you want you want to create some kind of diet. Well, I was going to say dynamism. That's not a word, but it needs to be it dynamic. Is, a word. is it? I'm sure it is. It needs to be dynamic, and it needs to yep. look like things are moving. So if you just put a plane there, and it, 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 there's not any motion blur, it'll just look static, like you've just placed it in the air. As okay. you can see now, it, it looks like it's mid-flight. And in effect, what you're doing is you're replicating the limitations of a real-life camera. So this scene is as mm. if a guy had set up a camera and mm. the shutter speed of the camera would not be able to capture the speed yeah. of that particular plane. So it would have that kind of blur effect. Am I on the right lines yeah. with that? Yeah, no, that's that's correct. Because what, you, what you're what you trying to do with composite is sell the fake. Like yep. obviously what you, you can create a fantasy world, but you still got to sell the fake. And that means you've got to have certain things based in reality. If you've watched any movies or even if you've seen photography, 
if you get a plane that's flying across the sky, usually there'll be a bit of motion blur because, it, again, unless it's a digital camera that shoots like a super yeah, high shot. Yeah, it's a specialist piece. camera yeah. for that very purpose, like a sports camera, high shot yeah, speed. Yeah, yeah. But what you're doing, in effect, is replicating physics. Yeah, and I think if you if you always be even the most fantastical images, if you if they're grounded in reality, like the rules of reality are adhered to, you can then yep. go as far as you want with the fantasy. And then uh, suspend and, the disbelief. And, yeah, and yeah, that, that's why I think photo manipulation is, is so good because you can mm. create that illusion and you've got so much freedom. Yeah. And if you learn these very subtle tricks, the, the work itself can be grounded in reality to an extent, but yeah, push. Definitely that fantastical concept let's bounce through these last layers and see what yeah, we've got so here yeah so i'm just tapping in the plane now and now i'm bringing in a few little uh particles again this is kind of yep. again just what we spoke about earlier with the lens and what would happen if it was a natural uh camera That's so i'm cool. just playing playing with the tone of the image so what what we're coming up to now is the color grading and as you'll okay. see the image will now when we get to the coloring and the color grading it'll just gel together so yep. I start. So I use the. I start adding a little bit of desaturation. Then I add a photo filter on just to kind of blend everything. And then I never really color... used the photo filter. I think I did ages yeah. ago, but I never really got into it. it. I use it just to kind of while I'm editing because it blends the tones a little bit better. But okay. then when you come to the final color, like that, and it makes that that final color grade makes all the difference to the. Now image what is within that layer group there? So what we've got in here is when it opens. Selective color. I'm a big fan of that, uh, and I'm a big fan of gradient map as well. Yeah. Good shout. I, I always use both of them together to color grade images. Yep. Um, so that's what, basically... can, you, can you can you open up the gradient map adjustment for me, please, mate? I just want to see what you got there. So what's so, that? So uh, a kind of dark, like a, a green saturated green color. So it, is, it, is that specific to this image, or did you? That, is I, that a I, go to? No, I created that. I've created this color. And why did um, you choose those colors? Um, it just goes with that style of, like, if you watch Seven Private Ryan, it's got these kind of dark greeny tones to it. Um, okay. Color, uh, just kind of general war films in general of this. this and like, you didn't have that at full fat. That's at like fifty what percent? I can't that, make that's it like out. 50, Fifty-two, fifty-three. But then I added cool. a little bit of red into the into the blacks. Oh, you like shadows. doing that? I remember yeah, that from the other tutorial. So if I take the, the red out, that's what it looks like. If I put the red in, you get this real painterly cinematic yep. feel to it. Yep, that's cool, man. And then I uh, did another gradient map over the top, which was just adding a little bit more uh, satur uh, saturated green. Yep. And then we, then we just got into sharpening and detail. And that layer there, so that that's a merged copy mm. of the layer stack pasted to the top. And then what did you set that to? Well, that's, did you uh, just did go you... unsharp mask on that? No, that's Detail Extractor on Color Effects Profile. Oh, Detail Extractor. I need to get that installed mm -hmm. onto my new system. Um, guys, the Nick Collection, it is Nick Collection, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It is a, a fantastic plugin. I'm not usually a plugin guy, but for the last couple of years, um, the Neo Stock photographer, Tom Parsons, got me onto Nick Collection, and it can really help give your work that final polish. I'll bung a link in the description if you want to check out Nick Collection. Clinton uses it. I use it. It's mm. a really nice piece of kit. Yeah, um, I haven't used that in a while, so that's a good shout. Yeah. I might... it's, it's, it, just, it just pulls out the details really well, yeah, like yeah. in the sky and everything. And you can do it with a delicate things. touch and not go overkill with it. Yeah, you well. don't want to do it. You don't want to do it globally too often. Or if you do yeah, it globally, absolutely. you need to you need to do it on a very low opacity. But I, it yeah. works better if you do it locally. Yeah. So then I started bringing some vignetting. So vignetting, just always good. I like that. Yeah. And then we got into the sharpening. So you might not be able to see that, but that's just a high pass filter. Yeah, I'm and a big then... fan of using high pass, especially when I use the um, mm. Photoshop oil paint filter. You can pull back some of the details that the oil yeah. paint knocked out. So and that's then cool. just an, and an overall darkened contrast yeah. of the image. And that, that's the final image. Right, Clinton, for the potential PC gaming hardware and software companies watching this today how do mm. they get in contact with you to get some fantastic artwork for their brands yeah just uh get in touch through the website at contact at rebelnorthcreative.com or they can contact me personally at clinton.loftiles at cool, rebelnorthcreative.com cool. 
Yeah, I'll bung both of them at the right at the top of the description. Anybody's interested yeah. in Rebel North Creators' work, hit that link in the description. Clinton, thank you so much for sharing your no worries, work with us today. And everyone tuning in, I appreciate you watching. I'll catch you at the next one. See you then.